Okay, as we all know, this right here is the Fermont's last theorem. But you might not know, this is the Euler's sum of powers conjecture, which is kind of complicated. But let me tell you, it implies that this equation should not have any solutions in integers. However, in 1966, it was disproved. It. And in 1989, they put this as an Amy problem. So now let's go ahead and solve this question. Well, well, let's go ahead and make some observations. And of course, I will write this down right here for you guys. First of all, as we can see, based on this, this is the biggest. Of course, we can say that n has to be bigger than 133, right? So that's the first information that we have. n has to be bigger than 133. Can we find out an upper number for the n though? Well, yes. And to do so, we can do the following. From here, this is the smallest. Let's go ahead and factor that out. Also, this is not divisible by 27 to the fifth power, but we can do the following. Check this out. So let me just put this down on the outside. 27 to the fifth power. Now, this is what we have to do. Just pay attention to the base because the powers are the same already. So have a look. We have 133. And go ahead and divide it by 27. And this is approximately 4 point something. So we are going to run up. And then I will go ahead and put down 5. And then I will maintain the power 5. After we have done this, we can say the original is less than the expression that we are about to get. Of course, we have to maintain the same equality for the rest, right? Well, let's go ahead and do the next one. 110 divided by 27, it's about 4 point something again. So I'll just write down this as plus 5 to the 5. And next one, this divided by 27 is about 3 point something. So we run up, which is 4, and then 5, and then this right here is just going to be 1. Very nice. Now, my next goal is to write this as some number to the fifth power, because on the right hand side, we just have n to the fifth power, right? And we have 27 to the fifth power already. Huh. I think I'm just going to compute like what that number is. So let me just do that on the side. 5 to the 5th power, this is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. 25 times 25, which is 6, 25 times 1 more 5, which is 3, 1, 2, 5. Okay, so 2 of this, and then 4 to the 5th power, which is the same as 2 to the 10th power, which is 10, 24. So now, let's go ahead and add this up. This is going to be the same as 27 to the 5th power. This plus this, which is double of that, which is... 6, 2, 5, 0, plus this, which is going to be 7, 2, 7, 4, and then add 1. So it's 7, 2, 7, 5, right? Now, we see that earlier, 5 to the 5th power is already 3, 1, 5, 3, 1, 2, 5. So let's go ahead and maybe check 6 to the 5th power. Again, I need to write this as some number to the fifth power, right? All right, so this right here is, of course, 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Uh, the easy way to do this is you just change the change 3 6 to 3 7 and then you just maintain your 6 like this, right? So, yeah, that's how you can do it. All right, I used a calculator earlier, but anyway. So, this right here, we can say this is less than 27 to the fifth power times 7776, which we can say this is 27 to the fifth times 6 to the 5. And we can say this is just 27 times 6, which is 154, and then to the fifth power, like that. Now we are saying n to the fifth power is less than this to the fifth power. So of course, we can say n is less than 154. Very good, huh? Now, of course, you can just go ahead and start with 134. Plugging worked out. If it works, good. If not, try 135. Plugging worked out and all that stuff, right? And let me know how that goes. But uh, of course not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Of course, we have a better way, right? So. Here is a better way. Whenever you're trying to solve these kind of equations, you can always ask yourself first that 
is n going to be even or not? And then you can ask yourself, is n a multiple of 3 or not? Etc, etc. And the general way to do this is, you can do what we said, the modulo arithmetic. And this is how it works. You first look at the number, divide it by a number that you want, and just pay attention to the remainder. Let me demonstrate. So, we will first put down three lines like this. Now for the ID dot sign, this is called the congruence. And let's pick the number 2. And let's go ahead and first look at the base, divide it by 2, and pay attention to the remainder. This divided by 2 is 66, remainder 1. So I will just put down 1, and you can maintain the power for now. And then go ahead and do the rest. Remainder will be 0, and then you have the 5. And then remainder will be 0, you have the 5. And then 27 divided by 2, the remainder will be 1. And then you have the power 5. And then we can just work this out. This is just 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then divided by 2 again, we get remainder 0. And whenever we are doing this, in the end here, be sure you put down a parenthesis and say ma2, like that. So, based on this, we know n is congruent to 0 ma2, meaning n is actually even. But I will put down n is congruent to 0 ma2 because it's cooler like this. Now, let's go ahead and do the next one. This is actually really good because it reduces half of the number right here, right? But let's do the next one. Let's say mod 3, yeah? So again, we are using 3 now. Pay attention to the base first. 133 divided by 3 is 44, remainder 1. So you have 1 to the fifth power right here. Just maintain the power. Do the next one. You will get 36, remainder 2, and then the power... This is actually multiple of 3, so it's going to be 0, and likewise, you also get 0. Well, this is 1 plus 32, which is 33, divided by 3, the remainder will be 0. And again, in the end, be sure you just indicate that you are doing this in the math 3 world. So n is actually a multiple of 3. So here, n is congruent to 0, math 3 like that. Well, let's do one more. And usually it's easier if you pick some prime numbers. So the next one I will do is 5. All right, here we go. Pay attention to the base, 133 divided by 5. It's really easy. Just pay attention to the last digit, which is 3 to the fifth power. Next one, 0 to the fifth power right here. And the next one, you get 4. And then again, maintain the power. Next one, it's 7, but if you divide it by 5, the remainder will be 2. So it's actually 2, and then you keep the power. Now, let's work this out individually. 3 to the 5th power is 243, and then you mod 5, you get 3, right? So this is 3. Next one is 0. Next one, you get 4 to the 5th power, which is the same as 2 to the 10th power, which is 1024, divided by 5, the remainder will be 4. This is 32 divided by 5, the remainder will be 2. Okay, I did the math. It's not I just erased the power, all right? All right, next one. We will just go ahead and add this up, which is 7 and 9, so 9, yeah? Altogether is 9. And then, 9 is congruent to 4 mod 5. So right here, we can write down, n is congruent to 4 mod 5. Very, very nice. Now, with all this right here, we can actually figure out what n is in this range. Let me demonstrate. We just have to solve what we call the system of congruence. And if I have a much more detailed video from the past, you guys can go ahead and check that out. But I will write down as much detail right here as possible as well. Okay, starting from the first one right here, which is number 3. Because n is congruent to 0, ma2, we can write n being equal to 2 times some integer. So I'll just write yes, 2k, like this, right? So let's say n is equal to 2k, and then look at 4, what we can do is putting 2k into this n right here, 
So we get 2k is congruent to 0 mod 3. Like this. Alright, then I actually have to isolate the k, but you have to do it carefully. Do not just divide it by 2, it's usually not allowed. So let's do it this way. What we are going to do is, let's multiply all this by 2. Why? Because I know 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 divided by 3, the remainder will be 1. That's the key. So here we have 4k is congruent to 0, and of course, 4 divided by 3 is 1 remainder 1, so this right here tell you k is congruent to 0, and again this is just a uh, mass 3 thing, right? Then based on this, k is congruent to 0 mass 3, we can write k as 3 times some whole number, num 3 times some whole number, and let me just put on l, so I'll just say k is equal to 3l, so k is also a multiple of 3, like this. And in the end, I will just put down the 3L right here for the N. No, right here, I will just have to put this back right here. So we see this is going to be 2 times K, which is 3L, and that will be 6L. Then we see N is this, and then I'll put this right here. So from number 5, we get 6L is congruent to 4 mod 5, right? So this is that, and then again, this is the mod 5 world. Well, 6 is good because when you do 6 mod 5, the remainder is 1. So this right here is telling you that just have 1L, it's actually just congruent to 4 mod 5. And then in the end, this is what we can do. L, I can write this as Oops, it's just equal to 5 times some whole number, and L, uh, let me just use M. And then, don't forget right here we have the 4, so we actually have to put down plus 4, like this. Because if you divide this expression by 5, well, you have a remainder of 4 from here. So this is how L looks like. And lastly, we just have to put this back to the L, so we can figure out the form of the N, right? So let me write down N is nicely equal to 6 times L, which is 5M plus 4, and then multiply this out, which is 30M plus 24. So this is how N should look like. And then we can refer back to 1 and 2. Well, we know N is in between of this and that. So let's go ahead and put this down in the middle, namely 30M plus 24. And then I'll just put on 133 right here and then 154. And in fact, there's only one positive whole number that you can put for m to make this true. And the answer for that is m has to be equal to 4. And of course, you can go ahead and try it. You can try if m is equal to 3. It's not enough. If m is equal to 5, that would be too big. When m is equal to 4, you put it back, you will get 120 plus 24, which will tell you 144. And that's actually the end value as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, the final answer is that n has to be 144, like this. Man, this is actually such a great question. And in fact, it's also really famous as well. So sometimes if you look at this, if you remember the answer is just 12 square, you can just answer in no time, right? Very good stuff. Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video as much as I do. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. I mean, as always, that's it. Black pen, red pen, black pen, red pen. Is a calculus teacher uses black and red. He does math for fun. If he cues get done, using complex numbers, doing marathons. And as always, that is.